Hi and welcome to Matt's workshop. This is the second part of this series about my small workshop workbench build. So if you haven't already, please go back and watch the first part. Now that the frame construction is well on the way, I'll start to work on the saw box. So the first component I'll do is the sawbox drawer. All the boards I need have been cut to length and width. And the first operation I do is to cut some grooves on the side panels. These grooves will help me to position the drawer slides later. And then I pre-drill all the holes I will need to install the little riser blocks that I will be installing under the table saw. And finally I can just glue and nail everything together. Now for the main frame of the saw box, I'll start to work on the bottom panel first and I'll still have many holes to drill in this panel. Uh, the first one will be through holes to let go some wood screw to fix on the sides of the box to just make it stronger uh, because it has to support all the weight. I also need to drill several holes underneath the board and they will be used to install the different components for the locking mechanism. And finally, I need to make some cutouts in the corners to address some clearance issue that I have when the saw box is moving up and down. And I'm cutting these on the scroll saw. Now for the side and back panels, I start again by cutting some grooves to help me align the drawer slides that I will install later. On the side components, I have a groove inside for the drawer and two grooves outside for the vertical drawer slides. Now I'm cutting a small slot with a few holes on it, the purpose of which is going to be to receive a small wooden insert with a permanent magnet glued inside and this is going to help me hold the saw box door shut when not in use. And now I can start to assemble those side and back panels on the bottom one and everything is going to be nailed and glued except for the bottom which is also going to be screwed in place for more rigidity. Now that the box frame is in one piece, I can start to dress it up. So the next component will be the handle channel that I will be installing inside both sides of the saw box. I start by drilling a large hole with a fastener bit and then I finish opening it up on the scroll saw to form a U-shape opening. And this will be there to accommodate my finger when I need to reach the handle from behind. Now on the table saw I cut a series of grooves that will help me remove most of the material. Then I can just flip the board and quickly pry off all of those little slices.
and then I clean the bottom of this cut with the router. After that I use the scraper to just give it a more smooth surface finish and I give it a little bit of a sanding block finishing as well. And now I'm back on the box frame ready to install those panels and I'll start by applying glue and then I'll put it in place using a wood shim underneath it and then I can start to apply the nails to fix it in place. Here I'll be making the riser blocks that support the tubular frame of the table saw inside of the saw box drawer. So I start by cutting some plywood strips to width on the table saw. And then I go on the miter saw to cut them to length. Here I laid out all the holes that I need to drill in every component, so I need to go on the press drill and drill them out. Most of these holes are just clearance holes for wood screws, and they will be chamfered to receive flat head screws. Now for the assembly of these riser blocks, I start by gluing every components together and nailing them in place. and then the side strips are reinforced with wood screws. And I can now go on the saw box drawer to install those riser blocks in place. And you don't see it here, but I had to redrill these uh, clearance holes because I forgot to do it initially. And since all the holes were pre-drills for those screws, it's really easy to quickly assemble everything. On to the saw box front door now, and this is a pretty simple component. The first thing I need to do is cut some cutouts on each side which will be clearance for the handles that come out of the saw box. And again I just start by drilling some holes in the corner of the cutouts and finish them up on the scroll saw. And now I can drill and chamfer the clearance holes for the screws that will fix the handle in place. Finally, I can screw the handle itself, which was made of camera. And you can see on the corner of the, the door that I have some very tiny rectangular cutouts. And these are there for a little metal plate that I need to install for the magnets that will be holding the door shut. From the underside of the saw box here, you see that I have some wooden components there as well. Here I'll be making the lock pin guide blocks for the locking mechanism. Just very simple components here, rectangular plates in which I need to drill a bunch of clearance holes. Now time to make those handles that I intended to use to lift and lower the saw box. And this idea actually turned out to be pretty crappy, so I had to improvise something else that I'll be discussing later. 
But for now, just for those handles, it's pretty simple. Just some rectangular plates in which I need to cut some cutouts on the scroll saw to define the handle shape. On the tip of those handles, I install a small rectangular plate that is used to pull them out of the saw box when I want to use them. I first start by drilling some round holes that will be some clearance to insert the fingers uh, on both sides of the handle tip. And then I go on the miter saw and cut those little plates to width. After a little bit of sanding, I can now install those little tips on the handles and I just do so by applying some glue and holding them in place with two nails. Again, a very simple component I need to build now is the lock mechanism cover, which is just a quarter inch thick MDF panel in which I will drill uh, four holes at each corner with chamfers to accept flathead screws and those screws will be used to fix the panel in place underneath the saw box. For this locking mechanism, there are several components I need to machine out of metal, and the first one I'll be discussing is the guide pin support plate. This part is made of a quarter inch thick aluminum stock plate, and I'll start first by cleaning all the edges and making them square and bringing the part to proper width and length. And with every side square, now I can flip the part upside down and put it back in the vise to clean the bottom of it with the fly cutter. Then I remove the part to deburr it and flip it around so I can start to work on the features on the other side. The first feature is a groove that I make in the middle to relieve some of the friction of the plate that will be riding over the top of this block. And finally I need to drill the mounting holes and these will be counterboard to receive a little bushing that will be precisely controlling the distance between the pins. And the center of the hole is just a clearance for the wood screw that will fix the plate in place underneath the box. I can now work on the lock pin themselves and they start off as a half inch by half inch aluminum stock. The first thing I do here is I start to clean off one end of the stock and then I flip it around and do a setup for multiple parts and this setup will be used to cut them to length. Also I need to do a clearance hole for the screw that will be fixing the guide bushing. The pin here is viewed from the underside and this is the side where I need to chamfer the hole. I 
I now flip the part to work on the other side and you see now that I have it set up so that it's a bit higher off the vise so I can clean the whole top surface. And then on one side of the pin I need to do a pretty large material removal. This is what you see here. And finally, to complete the part, I just counterbore the hole to receive the guide bushing. The next parts that I need to set up in the mill are the camming plates. This is because I need to machine grooves along these plates, so both lengthwise and perpendicular. There is also a set of grooves that needs to be oblique, so I will have to turn the vise to be able to complete all the cuts. All the different arms and levers of the locking mechanism are made of flat bars, so you will see me here starting to cut them to length. The different sizes I'm using are 1 and 2 inch wide, and one of the 1 inch flat bar needs to be cut with a compound angle on both sides. And there's also a view here a bit late in time of the raw material cutting of the locking pins. Onto the drilling of those plates now. I won't be discussing every component individually, but on all of them I need to do some clearance holes and some of them will be chamfered. So this is what you'll see here. And now I'm going on the late to make some bushings that you see here on the render. I won't be filming all of them just because this is very simple turning stuff. And basically what you'll see here is just one of those little bushings with a chamfer at the end.
Now that all the machine components are ready, it's time to assemble them and fix them on the sawbox. Everything is assembled with standard hardware and the assembly is relatively easy as you can see here. I start by assembling what I call the main swing arm, which is made of two perpendicular plates and it will be free to spin around the center axis of the whole mechanism. Now I can install the cam plates on both ends of the swing arm. They will be free to pivot but also to move along their guiding slots. And now I install the locking pins, which are also free to move along the slots and pivot. Here I'm installing every component I need to be turning around the main pivot point. And then I can fix everything at the center pivot point of the mechanism with a wood screw. I can now position the guide pin support plate underneath the cam plate and start to fix them in place with the bushing and the wood screws needed. After this I need to install the locking pin guide blocks, so they're all made of plywood and I will just stack them onto each other and adjust the play from the pin from side to side by using some paper shims. I greased everything up and made a few minor adjustments to make the mechanism move smoothly. And then I can start to install the secondary spring lever. The purpose of this lever is actually to delay the retraction of the locking pins, meaning that whenever you want to drop the saw down, you first need to pull this lever which is going to put tension in the mechanism and it's going to be pulling on those pins which are going to be held in place by the weight of the saw box itself. And then once you start to lift the box a little bit, you release the weight from those pins and they disengage. You can now see the whole mechanism moving here and I'm doing a test with a vice grip simulating the release of the pressure on the locking pin which retracts the whole mechanism. Off camera I've installed the MDF cover to hide all the mechanism and then I flip the box around and here I start to install the drawer slides on both sides of the drawer to install it in the saw box. And I also install the vertical slides that will be used to fix the saw box inside the workbench frame. And finally I install some insulating strips all around the top of the frame because I want it to be air sealed under the workbench tabletop.
And this completes the pre-assembly of the saw box. This is it for this video, but there will be more to come in this workbench build series. So stay tuned for next, and if you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. And thanks for watching!